Okay, in 12.2, we're going to review laws of exponents. Now, this should look familiar to you because this is Algebra 1 material, but I want to just take a day to re review you on the rules of, of these exponents just because it's been a minute since you were in Algebra 1, and it's really important that you remember these going forward. So let's look at this first rule. The first rule says that is if you have two bases that are the same, like x variables or y's, as long as the bases are the same, if the, the exponents are different, to combine them, all I do is add those exponents. So if I look at number one, look, my base is all the same. They're all x's. So all I have to do is add my exponents. Now remember, this is a one right here. So it's negative three plus four, which is one, plus another one gives me x squared. That's it. I'm just adding. Now, Number two is different because it's got some bigger coefficients, right? Well, coefficients are going to act the same. They're not going to do anything weird. So we're going to multiply coefficients just like we always would. So it's be negative 14. And then x is the same base, right? So 13 minus 8 would give me 5, x to the fifth. So make yourself a little note here. Coefficients multiply the same. Coefficients are regular numbers, so no special rules apply. All right, look at number three. So let's multiply our coefficients first. So I would get negative 30. Let's look at the x's first. x to the ninth plus x to the fifth would give me x to the 14th power. And then the y's match. So y to the 16th minus 9 is y to the 7th. Okay? So there's my answer. And then let's look at number 4. We just have three terms. That's the only thing changing here. So I have a negative 4 times that 1 right there times the negative 1. So negative 4 times positive times negative would make it a positive 4. Now let's look at our x terms. x cubed x squared would make it x to the fifth. There's no x in the third term, so it's just x to the fifth. And then look, look at our y's. We have y to the first times y squared, which is y makes it y to the third. And then times another y is y to the fourth. And that's all there is to it. Now, the other rule we need to review is the one that says an, a value to a power raised to a power. When you power to the power, we multiply the powers. So it's a times n times n. And I know that's weird with a bunch of letters, but let me show you what I mean. So as we walk through this, let's try this one. x, y squared raised to the fourth. So it's like we're distributing the power a little bit. So I'll have x to the fourth times y to the eighth. And that's, that's it. That's your answer. All right. Let me show you one more. A couple more, actually. Number two here. 3a to the third, b to the third, raised to the third. So you got to be careful. This third power is getting distributed, if you will, to each of the terms. So it's really 3 to the third power. 3 times 3 times 3. 9 times 3 is 27. Now I have a to the third. 3 times 3 is 9. And b to the third, 3 times 3 is 9 as well. So I would raise both to the power of 3. Let's look at a couple more. This one is a little more complex. We're going to get rid of the parentheses first by distributing, if you will, that power across. So 2 to the fourth, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 one more time is 16. x to the third, so 3 times 4 is 12. y, 8 times 4 is 32, so it's got some big powers here. Now we have x, 7 times 5 is 35. And y, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Now, they're just side by side. Nothing's being raised to the powers. So um, now we're just adding across. Now we're back to that original rule. So the coefficients are 16 times 1 is leaves me with 16. Now I look at my x terms. 12 plus 35 ends up with x to the 47th power. And then y, 32 minus 10, is to the 22nd power. Okay, so we did two things here. We raised powers to the power, and then we did 
multiplication side by side. So here's the rule you want to remember, is you want to undo the outside powers first. Okay, undo the outside powers first. So let's try one last time on number four here. Undo these outside powers first. So negative two cubed. So be careful with your signs here. Negative two times negative two times negative two leaves you with a negative eight x to the sixth. Now that negative one right there, be careful, to the fifth power, anytime you raise negative to a fifth power or an odd power, it stays negative. So still negative one, one times to the fifth power is still one. And then I have y to the tenth. All right, now we're doing side by side where we just add exponents. Nothing's being raised to powers anymore. So a negative eight times negative one gives me eight. And then I have x to the sixth, y to the tenth. So it looks nasty, but it really ends up not so bad. Okay, so something to be aware of. You have to have like terms to be able to collect them. The, and to be like terms, the variable part has to be identical, all right, identical. And then you would collect your coefficients, okay? You can't combine them if they're not identical. So if I look at this, look at number five here. X squared times Y, X squared times Y, X, Y squared. This is not identical to these, right? So I can't combine this guy with the others. Well, I can combine these two because the, the variables are identical. So when I get my answer on this one, I would just collect the first two. So 10x squared y plus xy squared. I have to leave it just like that. Now, let's put it all together and see what we get. Example 6. 7x to the 6th, y to the 4th, plus x to the 3rd, y squared, squared. Let's see what happens here. So we want to do the outside power thing first, right? So I'm going to rewrite this, get rid of my outside power by distributing that power. So I'll have x to the sixth, y to the fourth. Now I lean back and look. Ooh, my, va my variables and their powers match. So I can collect those together, and I would get 8x to the sixth, y to the fourth. So that one worked out. Let's look at this one last example x squared times x y to the third squared, y squared times x squared y squared squared again. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's get rid of the parentheses first. So let's do x squared times x squared y to the sixth plus y squared. Distribute that power, x to the fourth, y to the fourth. Now we're all side by side. Nothing's being raised to the powers, so I can add my powers. So I'm going to distribute this way. So I'll have x to the fourth, y to the sixth. Nothing happened with y here, right? All I could do is combine my x terms. This one, I'm just using y. So I, x to the fourth stays the same, y to the sixth gets put together. Now I look back and look, they are the same, and I can add them together, and I have two, x to the fourth, y to the sixth. All right, so a lot of little rules to remember. Hopefully you remember and we'll practice this in class.